What's up everybody, Brian with BPS Customs here. And today we're gonna to take a look at a product that's been out for a couple months, but that I actually just recently picked up. And that is this, this is the Corsair Strafe Mechanical Keyboard. So today we're actually gonna be talking about the non-RGB version of the Corsair Strafe keyboard. Uh, Corsair came out with the original Strafe uh, mid last year, mid 2015, maybe a little bit later than that. Uh, but then they came out with the RGB version in I believe October. Um, I think the RGB version is actually a little bit better of a seller, but it is a little more pricey and I actually don't need uh, an RGB keyboard uh, right now. I do have my thermal take. Uh, Poseidon Z RGB keyboard, uh, which I use uh, as well. And the Corsair keyboard is actually just gonna be used for business purposes. Uh, but because I do want a mechanical keyboard, because it's what I'm used to, uh, it's what I like typing on, uh, I did go uh, with the Strafe. Now the Strafe does have Cherry MX switches. Uh, you can choose between blue, brown, and red. Uh, I did pick up the red version. And uh, there's really no difference in the physical layout of those keyboards, it's just the switches that are different. They all have red backlighting. Uh, the backlighting is adjustable to a degree. It's not really uh, anything that you could change or customize really specifically. The construction of the keyboard is a matte plastic with the exception of the side edges, which are actually piano finish glossy plastic. Uh, normally, I, I think that I'm kind of in agreement with most uh, YouTube tech reviewers on this. I would rather have a matte finish, but the fact that the glossy plastic is actually just on the edges of the keyboard makes it completely tolerable, not even something that you really notice. Now, there is no aluminum finish. Uh, Corsair does save that for their higher end K70 series, um, but the plastic is very solid, very sturdy. The, the keyboard does appear to be well built. It does not have a lot of flex to it. The, the keycaps and every other part of it seems to be really made. Uh, to last uh, a good amount of time. The layout of the keyboard is traditional. Uh, there is nothing really special about how Corsair has done this. And this is actually something that I was specifically looking for when choosing a keyboard. The keyboard does have a traditional 104 key layout with a 10 key number pad to the right. Uh, I do prefer this layout. I don't really like keyboards that have all these extraneous buttons, uh, bound macro keys, things of that nature. I don't typically use them even when I am gaming. Uh, maybe that's why I'm terrible at games. I do prefer this look to the more angular gamery series keyboards that end up having way too many buttons and functions to them like the Lenovo Y series and the keyboard recently released by G-Skill. The keyboard has a textured space bar um, which I find nice, but not completely necessary. It's not like you're ever really gonna miss the space bar or have your finger go flying off of it because you're sweaty or something like that. Keyboard does have a USB pass-through on the top, uh, and I, that is the reason why the cable is so thick. Uh, the cable has two USB connections on the end, uh, and they actually combine to form one very thick cable that is a little bit difficult to maneuver, uh, to be honest. So if you are planning on trying to snake the cable through something like a cable grommet or something like this, uh, which is just a small cable channel, you may run into some difficulty uh, because the cable itself is too thick to actually fit in between these spaces and be um, bound by these channels. That's just something to keep in mind when you're working on your cable management for your desk. Some people don't even care. Um, but, you know, to be honest with you, I'm a little bit of a stickler for it. So, um, you know, I use these things all the time. And when I went to use it with this keyboard, it just didn't work. The keyboard does have some what are now, I guess, traditional features of mechanical keyboards. Uh, this includes a Windows lock key, 100% anti-ghosting, and full key rollover. It does have some media functionality, although it doesn't have any dedicated media keys. Uh, the F row does function as media keys uh, if you use the FN button. Uh, something that I've kind of not really liked uh, recently as this is the trend. I guess I'm contradicting myself a little bit here because I said I don't really like extraneous buttons, but I don't really consider volume up and volume down to be extraneous. And me having to hit the FN button before I hit volume up or volume down actually kind of bugs me. And I wish sometimes that uh, companies would go back to the way um, it used to be where you had dedicated volume up and volume down buttons. 
I don't really need uh, buttons for play, pause, rewind, all that, but volume up and volume down might be something that companies might consider bringing back uh, without having to press the FN key to activate them. Now I did get the Cherry MX red switches on this keyboard. Uh, the keyboard is available in browns and blues. Um, my other keyboard that I use is a Thermostake uh, Poseidon Z. Uh, it actually has blue switches, but non-Cherry blue switches. Uh, they feel similar. Uh, they're very clicky, they're, they're a lot louder. The input is a little less linear and uh, that actually once you hit a certain point of activation, the letters do, do appear as opposed to triggering much further up in the keystroke. Um, I don't know if that's a keyboard specific thing, uh, but uh, I actually do prefer the Cherry MX Reds, um, although I've kind of gotten used to the blues also. The keyboard does come with sets of keys specifically for MOBAs and for FPS games. Uh, it also comes with a keycap puller, which is remarkably easy to use. Um, you just kind of click the keycap puller onto the top of the keys and pull up and the keycaps come right off as they should. Uh, the other keys get pushed firmly into place and then you're left with whatever pattern you've decided to make uh, out of the extra keys that you've been provided. Here's a sound sample, uh, both with the microphone clipped near my ear, so it would be what you would hear normally, uh, and with a microphone placed directly next to the keyboard. As you could hear, it's not as loud as something like blue switches would be, um, and that's a property of the red switches. Um, you know, it, it still gives a satisfying click uh, and is very tactile when you push it, uh, so I don't really think that there's any problem with the input itself. Um, it, sh it strictly comes down to personal preference, and when you go to purchase these keyboards, especially if you're buying them on something like Amazon, uh, all the options should be available and you can just choose whichever switch uh, you prefer. Overall, this keyboard came in at a price point of about $100. Um, I do think that the keyboard is worth it. To be honest with you, that's kind of what mechanical keyboards are going for these days. Uh, this does come with genuine Cherry MX switches, which makes it a little more preferable to some of the other kinds of switches that are out there. Um, for a while, Corsair was the only company that was licensed to distribute uh, keyboards with Cherry switches, uh, which is why they continue to do so to this day. So having used this keyboard for a couple days and having gotten used to the difference in the switches between the reds and the blues, um, I could definitely say that this, uh, the keyboard actually is very comfortable to use. Um, I do really prefer that the, uh, the, the keycap shape be, uh, I guess, traditional as opposed to some kind of crazy angular design because both that you can eat more easily replace the keycaps with other keycaps you may have uh, and also the fact that that's what my fingers are used to pressing into. Uh, I don't want to really press into something and feel an angle or a, a point or something along those lines at the bottom of the keys and by the same token I don't want to have giant uh, sides of the keys coming up and surrounding my finger as I'm pressing down. Uh, I guess yes this is, this is how I type. So I do prefer the traditional keycap shape and I'm really glad that Corsair has decided to stick with that for this model. Overall, I could say I definitely recommend the Strafe keyboard. Uh, if RGB lighting is not super important to you, you could save yourself a couple dollars by not going that route. Um, like I said, they do offer the Strafe in an RGB uh, model, which, I mean, you could take a look at for yourself if, if that's what you really need. Um, for me, uh, just having the red backlight is, is fine. The, the keystroke inputs were fast and accurate and linear. Um, the click was satisfying. The features, while limited, are useful, like the USB pass-through. Uh, and the Windows lock key. And uh, overall, I say I definitely recommend this keyboard. Um, if you're looking for something around the $100 price point, um, maybe a beginner mechanical keyboard, if you're not really looking to spend $150 on something like a Razer or something along those lines, um, this is something to definitely look into and uh, Corsair has made a good product. Overall, good job Corsair. So that's it for this review. I hope you found it at least a little bit informative. 
Um, if you uh, have any questions about the keyboard, feel free to hit me up on Twitter or in the comments section below. So I do apologize, this video has been a long time coming. I haven't put out a video in a couple weeks and I've had uh, some things happening in my personal life that are really taking me away from contributing to this channel and I do apologize. Um, I don't know if people really want to hear about it. If you do, again, let me know and maybe I'll make a really quick video just explaining what's been going on. Uh, but otherwise, we're going to try to get back on a regular schedule, try to get back to a once a week release uh, for tech videos, review videos, things of that nature. And I promise I have a video on my car coming um, because it's awesome and I do want to talk about it. But uh, my name is Brian and I'm with BPS Customs. Thanks for watching as always.